on guys welcome back to the channel my name is Harden. today i'll be breaking down this six game nba slate here for friday night on DraftKings. talking through my favorite plays doing a game by game breakdown all the good stuff in this video so make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and let's get right into it so starting off here we have toronto versus philadelphia i think it's an eight and a half point spread here um about 230 ish game total if i believe uh, if i saw that earlier today uh but for the toronto side here um no one's really jumping out to me as of right now. I do think Pascal is an interesting option here. 7.9K, prices come down a bit. Uh, but it's one of those things, you know, at the beginning of the season, he wasn't the best, very inconsistent. Uh, you know, when he reached 40, four, more than 40 fancy points once in the, you know, three times in the first, like, 10, 12 games. Then he's really turned it on since. Uh, playing about 35, 36 minutes. Shooting 15 or more times, uh, usually. And he's been pretty strong at getting the rebounds and assists. A couple steals as well, so... I think Pascal is a pretty strong secondary option. Scotty, Throder, OG, Portal, all decent secondary options for me. Um, I wouldn't put him in that strong territory just because I don't love the price tag for Scotty, even though he's kind of been the main engine of this team and he's been very, very strong in terms of his output. Is you know double double whether it's rebounds or assists, he does have that upside. Been really good at blocks and steals, so it's like he's a strong option uh, to play. I just don't love the price tag. I'd rather get to different areas. Um, you know, Schroeder has that double double upside, 6.4k. I'd feel a little bit better getting to a guy like uh Denwitty, who does have, you know, a little bit more upside. He's a little bit more aggressive offensively than Schroeder is. Uh, and he's only six hundred dollars more expensive than Schroeder. So that's kind of my, my take there. OG, they'll need his defense, but it's one of those things very inconsistent. So it's like no one really jumps off the page here. Powell, uh, you know, he has a tough matchup against Embiid, stays out of foul trouble. You know, he could be one of those sneaky plays plays in your know, mid-20s, even 30 minutes or more, could go for a pretty, pretty strong game here. Uh, it's just one of those things, will he stay out of foul trouble? That's the only question, and will he get the minutes? If you don't think he gets the minutes or gets the foul trouble, you know, Precious is going to be an interesting option. Uh, could see, you know, 20-plus minutes, solid point-per-minute guy as well. And obviously, if there's foul trouble for Poto, they're going to need some uh, tall guys in there. Precious will be kind of the main guy off the bench. He's an option at 4.8. And then if you're really looking to get risky here, Boucher is always a very interesting, you know, solid point per minute guy, as you can see from his box score. Um, I don't know if there's a, a way, unless, you know, multiple of their wings get in foul trouble for him to see 20 plus minutes, but he could. And at 3.9K, if you need a flyer, he's there. Uh, for the Philadelphia side here, it, it's really just the Embiid and Maxi show, if I've always said for this team here. I mean, Embiid at 11.2K is a very strong price tag for guys you can see who's been absolutely cooking this year. Uh, so I really like him, uh, as most people do. Maxi really like him as well. Kind of like um, a Scotty Barnes play here. Scotty obviously has a little bit safer upside with the rebounds and assists, uh, just a little bit higher ceiling there than a guy like Maxi. But Maxi's obviously a better score, so it kind of almost evens out. Uh, but I do think Scotty's a little bit safer. But I really like Maxi, his minutes, how aggressive he is offensively. Could go for, you know, 30, 35 plus points in real life, uh, which really helps out. So really like those two. Those are both very strong plays. I don't think there's a need to get to these mid ring guys like Tobias and Kelly. They're just not shooting the ball a ton. They're not getting enough volume for me to like them at the price tags. Melton's out, or excuse me, questionable. If he's in, I think he's okay, like last piece in. Don't think there's a need to get to him just like Ubre or Harris. Now, if he's out, maybe that's a few more shots going to the other guys' way. Not Nothing crazy there because you can see Melton's really not shooting the ball much. Uh, he's just kind of more like playmaking, maybe a random three here and there, a little bit of a defense. Uh, so if he's out, they could definitely start a guy like Pat Beverly. I uh, you know because they do have both Batum and Covington out, or excuse me, Covington might be out as well. Or they could start Covington, or they can get, we could go to like a Marcus Morris, um, Morris Jr., or excuse me, excuse me, Senior, or a Daniel House. So there could be a little bit of value here, not like a plug and play, like a, a lock that we, we want, everyone wants to play, but there could be a little bit of value. Moving on to Denver here. Absolutely love the price tag here of Jokic. I mean, he's been under 11K once this season. That was the first game of the season when one for a 70 bomb. But really, really like Jokic here at this price tag. He's been a little bit inconsistent, a little bit down in terms of his standard uh, the past like week since the beginning of December uh, when he was having a strong you know start into December. Kind of has filtered, you know, fluttered off a little bit, just a little bit. So I absolutely love him here in the spot against Brooklyn. Expect him to start turning it back on again. Uh, same thing with Jamal Murray. He's finally seen those minutes. You know, he's dealt with injuries, missed some games, been limited in some games because of that injury, uh, those injuries. So he's going to finally start seeing, I think, 30-plus minutes here going into the second part of the season. Uh, so I think he's a very strong option, 7.3. MPJ's price is finally coming down. 
Uh, for a while, there was close to 8K, which I did not like at all. I mean, it made sense. A lot of those games, they're missing one or two of their main stars. But now, 6.3, he's getting that range of, like, he's definitely a solid GPP option just because of the upside there. If he hits the shots, gets some rebounds, he can easily go for, like, a 20-10 double-double. Very strong play at 6.3 if you're looking to get a little bit different and a little bit risky. Aaron Gordon's fine if you land on him. That's my my thing there. Uh, if he's out, don't think that it changes too much here. I don't think there's a need to get to any of these guys there. They're just kind of there for me. Peyton Watson's been seeing a little bit more minutes recently. So sure, you can take a chance on him, but I, I don't really trust the production right now. Moving on to Brooklyn here. They're a team that's just like, interesting in GPP plays. And what I mean by that is they're all coming in at like decent price tags. You don't feel great. So you don't feel bad about them. And they all have like pretty solid upside. So I really like the main three here. Thomas and Dinwiddie are probably my favorites. But Bridges is always going to come in at low ownership. I think all three will probably come in at pretty low ownership on this slate. Uh, but I really like Cam Thomas and just the insane ceiling he has if he does hit his shots. He's very score independent. But as you can see, he'll play the minutes and he'll shoot the ball a ton if he's making those shots. Dinwiddie, as I said, a little bit more pricey than uh, Schroeder. But still, I think the minutes are a little bit safer. He's a little bit more aggressive offensively. And it's a little bit safer in terms of like rebounding for a guy like Dinwiddie. Uh, so I think he's a strong play. As you can see here, he does have solid upside. So that's my thing there. Claxton, just not seeing a ton of minutes. Otherwise, I'd really like that price ticket for him. Cam Johnson, more of that, you know, GPP option. And I do have a little bit of interest in Royce on the ODFS. They'll play good minutes, but that's about it. Moving on to ATL here. Uh, Trey Young is really the only interest for me as of right now. He's been playing really, really good recently. Has uh, kind of had that double-double upside similar to uh, Tyrese Halvern, as you can see here, with the points and assists. So he's always a strong option uh, if you want to ride that hot streak. DeJounte Murray is more of that contrarian GPP option. Uh, solid secondary option as well. Uh, 8K, don't mind him. Clint Capella, he's been playing better, but he's just there for me. And then they all, they'll play Bogdan, Sadiq Bay, Hunter, all a decent amount of minutes. No one really stands out to me. You know, Bay has just been absolutely got awful shooting the ball. He's been a ton of minutes, but he just can't hit a shot. So if you think he hits a shot, he'd probably be my favorite of the group, even though Bogdan has been, you know, absolutely on fire recently. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of my my thoughts there. I think they're all decent options. No one really stands out too, too much for me. And that's really it. Moving on to Miami here. Absolutely love this matchup here for the Miami team. Bam, Tyler Hero going to lead the way. Really like both of them. I think Tyler Hero will obviously be a little more owned than Bam. I think Bam will kind of go under the radar, but he should see 35-plus minutes. Has double-double upside. Can play make. Can get those steals and blocks. And can be aggressive offensively. So I think it's a very, very strong option tonight. Really, really like Tyler Hero as well. Rest of the team just kind of there for me. The guys, you know, the prices are dropping for these other guys, which makes them a little bit more appealing. But as of right now, it's really just the Tyler Hero and um, Bam show. That's really it. If you think Duncan Robinson gets hot, you could see extended minutes, you know, kind of go for 30 plus. But otherwise, that's really it for me. And now Dallas is going to be the team of the day just because, as you can see, everyone's out. So Luke is out. Kyrie's out. Lively is out. Exum's out. Green's still out. Cleaver's still out. Seth Curry's questionable. So starting five as of right now, it's looking like it's going to be um, Powell, Williams, Jones Jr., I'm assuming Hardaway Jr. And then I would assume they're going to start um, – Hardy, wherever he is, 4.3K, going to throw him in there, going to be the lock of the day. He'll probably be 85, 90% owned today. Just be, there's no guards here for Dallas uh, today. Um, Lawson, I do have some interest in him, like if he gets to start or if he even comes off the bench. I mean, as you can see, they don't have any guards. So I expect big minutes for Hardy. I expect Lawson to be very, very solid and cheap. A value option there at 3,000 that we can get to. Just wait for confirmation or if we get some news from some beat riders that Lawson will play and was with them. Uh, I would like him. And if Steph Curry, you know, somehow gets a start, or Seth, excuse me, I'd really like him. But as you can see, we don't know yet if, he gets, if he's going to start. Kind of scoring dependent guy, but he'll kind of take on more of that guard role. He does have that ability to do that as well. So I'd have interest in him, in Lawson, in Hardy. Those would be my favorite plays. And I do think, you know, guys like Jones, Williams, and even, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr., he'd probably be the best of that secondary group. But I do think they have upside, but I'd rather get to those other three guys, as I mentioned. Moving on to Houston here. Sangoon's price is slowly dropping. I do like that. I like Fred's as a lot as a lot as well. And that's really it. I don't really get to these secondary guys. You know, it's just really hard to trust their production. Um, Eason's really jumped up the board as well. He's seen a ton of minutes recently. 6,000. 
and, and that's really it. And it's a really no no interest in these value options for me as well. They're just not seeing a ton of minutes, not really productive. It's really just the Sengun from Van Fleet show. And then one of like he's in uh, Jalen Green or Jabari Smith Jr. Have a good game. It, that's it's just it's really hard to pick who it is, but that's really it for the breakdown there. Uh, I'd rather just, I'd rather just stick with you know some goon and uh, Fred Van Fleet. Moving on to Phoenix here, uh, your Narkic is out, Beal is still out, so either they're going to start Eubanks or they're going to start Me Too. I think both are strong options. I think I'm feel a little bit safer going to Eubanks there at 4,500, uh, but I think both are very, you know pretty strong options there for some value tonight. I just think Eubanks is a little bit safer in terms of like rebounding, getting some uh, uh, you know a couple of blocks. Maybe uh, scoring some points, maybe having a little bit of upside there with double double. What to see? Vito's a little bit better of a shooter, uh, but obviously he's not going to see a ton of shots there with Durant and Booker both there. I think Durant and Booker are both fantastic plays here going against Sacramento. I think Durant's the safer option. Booker, um, I really like him just because he has been shooting the ball well, as you can see 11 to 25, 10 to 24, 11 to 26, 9 to 15. Um, so I'm kind of waiting for one of those games where he goes 30, 35, 40, even 40 plus points real life absolutely break this slate so i think he's a little bit better gpp option durant's a little bit better of a safer option that's really it's you know grayson allen i think is a strong mid-range option there at 5k if you're looking to get to that that's really it for me uh for the phoenix side here you know they'll dust stuff guys like not zero little we'll see some more minutes he's an okay value same thing with bates diop they're fine uh but nothing too crazy there moving on to sacramento here uh so bonus fox look really really good here that's really it for me. You know, me, Keegan Murray, if you land on him, kind of like a last play in for me. Uh, I'd rather get to the two main guys. Monk's always an interesting GPP option. Mendes are kind of over the place, kind of sporadic, but that's kind of what you want for a GPP. He does have that 40 plus upside. That's really it for me. Herder, really hard to trust his minutes. It really comes down to can he hit his threes? If he gets on fire, sure. You can see mid 20s, uh, even 30 plus minutes have a really strong game, but he's just been so inconsistent. And I always mention, you know, Trey Lyles. Does have some upside there at 4.1K is a nice value piece. And then moving on to the last game here, Washington versus the Warriors. If you didn't think this game stays close, it's going to be because of Kyle Kuzma, most likely. So he's an interesting, you know, kind of higher priced secondary option that most people probably won't get to. Uh, Pool, it's Jordan Pool. I mean, revenge game narrative. Maybe he has a good game. We'll have to see 7.2K. I think he's fine. I just don't love the price tag. Trey Jones finally has had a few good games in a row. It's one of those things, right? It's like, can we trust the minutes? Can we trust the production? Because um, as you see from the beginning of the season, it's really hard to. It's just been all over the place. So don't love the price tag on him. I think Denny's a fine play. One of those kind of guys you kind of land on, like a Tobias, kind of those last piece in guys. Gafford had a monster game. You know, it's hard to trust that. Six blocks, four steals. I mean, that's an outlier game there. A lot of people will chase. I mean, it's a, a solid matchup. Stays out of foul trouble. We know he has solid upside, but you can't expect him to get you know ten stocks there. That's just insane. Uh, but yeah, I think he's a fine play. Don't love the price tag, but he's there. And that's really it for the Washington side. Nothing too crazy in Golden State. I still think Steph is a little bit underpriced here. Hasn't really had a monster game uh, in a little bit. So really like him. Clay's been turning on a little bit better uh, recently, as you can see here. He's there. I'd still rather get to Steph. Chris Paul is playing a little bit more minutes as well, so I think he's a fine play at 6.5. Uh, Pods is questionable, so obviously if he's out, uh, they're going to have to change up the starting lineup because he's been starting. Draymond's still out as well, so Kaminga's been starting. He's been playing a little bit better. I think he's an interesting GPP option. They could slide Andrew Wiggins back in the starting lineup as well. He'd be interesting, and then off the bench, we'll get more minutes to guys like Saric, uh, Moody, and then I do think they'll play Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, I'd say probably 15 minutes. I don't think you know we can trust anything more than that. And I think he, at the price tag, it's one of those, it's like, I'd rather get to Sarich or one of the wings than I would uh, Trace Jackson Davis. Moody's a fine play. 20 minutes, I think we can kind of slot him in for. Nothing too crazy in terms of value. But yeah, that's going to be the breakdown as, uh, as right now, as for today, guys. Obviously, make sure we, we do have some a decent amount of news to kind of wait for. So uh, as right now, this is, these are kind of the plays I'm kind of gravitating towards. Obviously, 4,800 left over. Not a lot to work with, but still... We can make it work with the the um, mass value and kind of any other news we might get before the uh, slate today. So make sure you hit that like button. Follow me on Twitter. I'll have some updates there for tonight, and I'll see you guys next video. Peace.